Hi friends, I'm Prairie Vintage. My name's Linda. I'm an energy intuitive reader here on YouTube. I use spirit, my intuition, the tarot to communicate energies to you guys, most amazing, beautiful viewers. Today's reading is going to be quite intense here, so I want to make sure that we're both sort of understanding what this reading is about before you engage. So I will put an intro message here just so you understand what this reading is about. Um, if you want, you can go straight away to the reading, although this might, um, there might be a lot of questions which you can avoid here, okay, if, if you understand where this is sort of coming from. So we're looking at the person on your mind, the connection you came here about, and what is the main soul lessons here that are needing to be experienced, okay, with this person, and have you gone through all of these experiences, or is there more? you know is 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 it finished is it concluded so the back half in regards to whether the lesson is concluded is very loosely used because the lesson isn't really fully experienced until we learn the lesson and so we might experience the same thing over and over and over so is it finished well if you keep experiencing the same sort of energy um, until maybe you learn from that, maybe it concludes a cycle, or maybe there's more, more in that lesson, different things that need to be learned sort of in succession. Okay, so if the reading sounds like everything you've sort of experienced with this person, then that's the sole lesson. And chances are, it's still continuing because there might be something that is unlearned or needing to sort of be absorbed and experienced in a certain way so that you can close out that chapter okay now we could see in that pile your experience and the connection and um and more and so if we're seeing more that's the more that obviously still needs to transpire between you and that person so would there be more absolutely until the lessons are sort of learnt okay so this is called karma call it what you will. So everyone sort of is in a karmic connection, okay, whether you be with your soulmate, your twin flame, your soul partner, whatever you call this person, there's lessons, okay, and we um, come into this life having energy already sort of uh, existing in our past lives, and so this energy needs to be balanced. So the lesson might be one of you know, well, why did I need to learn this? Well, in the past life, there might have been a soul agreement, an understanding for one or either of you guys to learn certain things, okay? And so if it sounds mostly like what this person is learning, then chances are that was what you were supposed to even out, okay? What you were supposed to even out. Now, this doesn't mean that in this lifetime that karmically, that was evening out any sort of balance with this person but overall energetically there was a balancing of karmas okay of energy call it whatever you will it doesn't if you don't even believe in karma it's energy balancing out and therefore there are certain experiences that we must go through in order to ascend grow spiritually and i assume you're all spiritual because you guys are all here at a tarot reading okay so this is spiritual lessons spiritual lessons and um and so my question to spirit was you know what is the main soul lessons that you and your person are here to experience and has it been fulfilled you know so the like i said the fulfilled part is kind of subjective because you could create new karma with that person especially if you know you're needing to sort of learn and close out chapters we might repeat and starts the whole karmic cycle all over again so it might appear as though you haven't yet closed it out although you've experienced sort of everything you need to but you haven't quite made sense of it or graduated from that experience okay so this is the angle it's coming from whether you believe in this sort of logic or not it doesn't really matter to me it doesn't really matter to the universe either but that's where this question is coming from okay we're looking at your experience when it comes to spiritual growth and soul connection and what that experience, the main lessons to be learned are and, um, you know, whether, whether you're just finished with this person, like, are they done? Do they come in to show you this and that's it? Or is there more with this person that's going to transpire here and, and what does that look like? Okay, so very, um, 
very layered reading here. So I'm going to hope I could do it justice for you guys, beautiful people. But I understand this isn't for everyone. So if this isn't your reading, then I will see you guys at the next reading. And I do love so much all of you guys for being here. You guys are all very safe and welcome in this space with me today. Pile one, we have the Wild Unknown Tarot for your pick. Pile number two, we have the Healing Light Tarot. And pile three, we have the Night Sun Tarot. So it's absolutely fine to be pulled to multiple piles, okay? Because we could have a predominant energy of your person and you in two different piles. It could be past, present, future energies as well. It should be something resonating with you. Although I do intend on capturing the main soul lesson of the connection within one pile. So hopefully we get sort of two energies or some sort of confirmation, but it could just be one predominant energy, you know? Um, so use your own sort of discretion and intuition if it makes sense to you, okay? And maybe the only way to do this is to tap into all three and, and uh, dismiss anything here that doesn't feel right or doesn't sound like your person or you or the connection at all, okay? So yeah, these are the three options. I will put the timestamp in the description box and the pinned comment below. It will take you guys directly to your pick and I will see you at your pick. Hello, hello, blessed angels. Pile number one, you guys pick the wild unknown tarot for your tarot pack. We'll put the tarot cards aside for now because I have pre-shuffled oracle cards. I've not looked at these, okay? I just ask spirit to provide us with the main soul experience that is supposed to transpire between you and the person on your mind and whether this is complete, fulfilled, obligated, and, um, and contractually closed. Okay, so I do highly, highly suggest you listen to the intro message so that this absolutely makes sense to you because it's coming from that sort of angle, not what you will it to be, although it is going to be your own intuition that's either going to resonate or not, but this is being pulled from... Um, if you want to call it a karmic agreement, a soul contract, a karma balancing out, lessons learned energetically, whatever terminology you want to use is, um, is sort of what I'm, what I'm pulling through here is the balancing of energy. Okay. What is it that this person is sort of supposed to learn in this experience with you in this lifetime? And what is it that you are supposed to learn mainly overall and whether, you guys have concluded these learnings or not, okay? So, um, yeah, make sure you listen to that intro, and let's take a look if this is one energy or blended, or, yeah, just use your own intuition to see whose is this resonating with. Okay, so I'm done playing games. Oh, okay, well, you make me nervous. Um, okay. Um, we have romantic love with 34, number seven, the frequency of romantic love supports our experience to know ourselves through the reflection of a conscious lover. Wow. Isn't that interesting? Okay. And then kindness, 29, or the number 11, the energy of kindness reminds us to be considerate and wise in our interactions with others and ourselves and to find the root of our love through connection to source. Okay, this, this energy is coming through quite strong already. So passion. It says instance chemistry, but I think it's supposed to be instant chemistry. Like each other equally and having fun with the passion at heart. And we have the sword and rose. Clarity, truth, revelation, solidarity, force, honor, protection, and power. This rose is um, giving me rebirth energy. Okay, and then we have Venus and Neptune. So Venus is the planet of love, ruling planet for uh, Taurus and Libra. And then we have Neptune, ruling planet for Pisces. So this is a very um, dreamy type love energy. Almost like fairy tale like um, energy pulling through here. Like Knight of Cups energy. Knight of Cups, Seven Cups type energy. Okay, and here we have the Camel. Camel. 
Okay, and we have surrender to miracles. Look at the two dolphins. Be open to miracles occurring in your life. Feel and know that these events are real. Let go of any resistance and banish any doubt that miracles can happen. Wow. All right. Change in the spiral with the arrows. The arrows are going inwards. Okay. And we have enlightenment. Wowzers. Beautiful. Yellow ray, which is the solar plexus. See the little child. Okay, which could signify the, the inner child. Enlightenment. And we have 1111, Take Me Home, Pathway to True Love. Wow. Okay. Um. And we have a 1-1 one, one with clear energy blocks, activating the higher chakras. Wow, I'll put that by the Enlightenment. Interesting energy here, you guys. South node with past, 33. 33 is a master number about reproduction, creativity, humor. It's also about Christ consciousness, joy, and harmony. South node with the past. And we have surrender. Sometimes learning to surrender can feel as if you're dying. The ego learns what's hardest to stop trying to control a whole world. The ego learns what's hardest to drop to stop trying to control the whole world. Sorry, I, I, I misread that. Surrender. Okay. Here we have responsibility. You are aware of the power of your thoughts and the amount of love you express. Oh, love, 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 love. All right. The flame, 51, or the number six. Six is the lovers. Gemini energy pulling through. The flame. So wands, energy, passion pulling through as well. And we have Thanatos. Wow, lots of passion here for sure. Thanatos, okay, um, 73 or the number 10. Okay, where do we put this? I don't want to cover the flame. We'll do it like this. And we have breath number 36 or the number nine and we have the great serpent with the ouroboros 45 or the number nine again nine is hermit energy virgo energy okay we have the beggar confronts empowerment at the level of physical survival awakens the spiritual authority of humility compassion and self-esteem shadow attribute dependence on others to the exclusion of effort visionary capacity to envision what is not yet conceivable to others willingness to proclaim a vision without regard for personal gain shadow attributes selling insights to the highest bidder compromising your vision to make it more acceptable mother Light attributes, nurturance, patience, unconditional love, joy in giving birth to life. Shadow attributes, smothering or abandoning children, instilling guilt in children for becoming independent. Wow, okay. Um, I am going to read the Thanatos before I get into this reading, although um, I do... Um, where am I going to put this? I, I do not know whether there, there's two energies here or one just yet but okay let me grab the book here first um okay yeah the Thanatos came through really really strong here and I'm feeling very a, like a lot a lot of passion here pulling through um the fact that we have passion here too when like I said I was getting um ace of wands from the flame let's see uh what number is that 73 okay this is death wow okay well it is tempting to oversimplify death and sum it up as transformation but the, the true archetypical resonance of thanatos cannot be easily assimilated or contained 
death is ongoing and omnipresent. Well, we have that with the um, Ouroboros. An eternal response to the gift of birth. Witnessing the ending of another being, creature, phase, or stage has deep consequences for the psyche. We are forever changed by the Thanatos as it sweeps us under its wings, making us relinquish control in every form. Like someone's really pulled by their passion here. It leaves a mark of an ash upon her heart, signifying we have touched the cusp of the underworld and will return to the land of the living eventually with more compassion and wisdom to share. This capacity is needed in our world. One who has faced the annihilation of Thanatos can face anything. When this card appears, it signifies an initiation into the underworld. Grieving, mourning, bearing witness to all that is. When dark fear or in, um, insensitivity to old age, illness, or the dying. Okay, so the heavy death, Scorpio energy. Um, I feel the triggering of someone's someone's passion led to this sort of an energy. So let me uh, let me tap into this, okay? Because there's lots pulling through here. Okay. Okay. So I, I feel one energy predominantly and one could be the other person. And I, and I feel like the predominant energy is your person, but you'll have to determine who is who. And this could all be one person as well. Okay. It depends, but I know what sort of belongs to the main person and, and the stuff that I'm not sure I will let you know here because it's, it could be a mix or could be all this one person. Okay. I hope this makes sense to you guys, but I have to let you guys know this because that's how it's coming through. So one person here, which I feel is your person, which I'm going to read is, um, I'm just going to say it, it is like a player energy. Okay. This is a player energy, but it's not that they're wanting to, um, wanting to just like burn and turn with people here but but I feel like the player energy is pulling through because this person has not experienced what does unconditional love look like in order to be very authentic to express this truly to come home to self to know what it is like to experience this you know, from, from a true deep place. And in order for this to happen, their old way of being is, has to die away. And so if this person continued to sort of engage with however they were engaged in the world, there would be no reason to change or shift at all in their world. And so I feel like there was a passion, a pull passionately to you in their world of uh sadness really okay because it's kind of a sad energy so although it might have been experiencing something physical is very superficial and it wasn't fulfilling at all to this person and kept them experiencing the same sort of thing and i feel like the universe is pulling this person to a higher level of consciousness and come out of this sort of energy of um just being, you know, engaged in physical lust, like, like, uh, lusty energy. Okay. Like fuck boy or like playboy or like, uh, player energy. I don't know. Okay. Now this doesn't necessarily mean for all of you guys that this person was like burning and turning a lot of people for some of you guys, it could certainly be, but I'm getting a sliding scale for some of you guys. I feel like all this person has experienced has been superficial type connections in their relationships which have been physical but did not experience what true unconditional love is here and i'm not talking about fear based love you know the special kind of love that we have when we have ego this is an unconditional love and an unconditional love of self but in order to experience real love true unconditional love we must burn off our egos and understand who we truly are and this would require us coming back to self and so i feel like the sole lesson here is to come back to self in order for this person to 
be open to what does unconditional love is be more kind nurturing and i feel like this person got triggered and inspired or you were the catalyst um to this journey for this person and so this person um it certainly felt like they've never felt before in your presence here and i feel this person could feel your energetic signature and and pulling this person to to follow in your sort of um expression and i feel like you're leading with this unconditional love you know and and so this is where there might be shared energy you might have had to shed a whole lot of your own sort of um egos and, and beliefs when it comes to relationship so you might have engaged in more special type connections which could have also not been in heart heart based um, consciousness which is an unconditional love okay so you might still be going through what this is like if you haven't achieved or reached this level this level of shedding of um, putting conditions on your love you know putting conditions or having sort of these these expectations that someone out there is going to fulfill any sort of obligation or bring you any sort of fulfillment here outside of what you could already find within self and so i feel like this is a process in itself okay and i feel like there's there's a real soul lesson here in and shedding the old system belief of how to love and engage in connection and come through with a, with a, a kinder, more uh, compassionate outlook to others and in relationship. So I don't feel like this person, back to this person, has experienced a real sort of romantic love outside of physical. Like, I, I don't even feel this person's had feelings, you know, in, in line with them. Um, with love like I feel like this person is in some sort of dreamy fantasy state here that I don't think they've ever have experienced I feel their world was um quite dry of love I don't think it ever really presented presented itself to this person you know like any person they've really been engaged with has always sort of fell in the other bucket of fulfilling the same sort of energy that they were reliving here and so this connection is to give this person clarity in regards to honoring themselves, loving themselves. Now, this other part, okay, it could be what your soul sort of lesson is as well, or it could be this person, and I'm not sure, and it could be blended. There, there's a, there's a, a psychic energy pulling through here, like one of you guys is opening up to your um, higher chakras, which is allowing you to see with your third eye. So this could be you, or this could be both of you, or just this person, okay? So it's providing this sort of psychic ability, because once we sort of shed the ego, we're able to see clearer, we're able to connect with the higher uh, chakras and clear any blocks that were getting in the way of us connecting to the divine. And so I feel like one of you guys definitely, or if not, like I said, both of you guys have a gift, an ability to be a seer here okay to be a seer and tap into the divine in a way here that um is quite profound and so if this hasn't come yet this is sort of what this purpose was for someone to really tap into the divine energy here to become clairvoyant or just to remove blocks so that their psychic abilities can flow but only when they return back to this heart-based consciousness and return back to self and so there really is a true lesson of enlightenment, but it is about seeing clearly because we've removed any blocks that we're getting in the way here in the matrix world that were keeping us sort of unable to tap into that power. Okay, so I feel there's a rebirth here. Um, and, and the rebirth really is shedding the old stuff that was blocked and keeping keeping this person stuck and there could be mirroring here so you might have been stuck in your own sort of way but the stuckness here um seemed never ending because i feel like this person was sort of um 
perpetuating or in this sort of trap. And so now this rebirth is once that sheds like the, 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 the actions of the, the empty actions, you know, the actions of connecting to others and relationship in, in more of a shallow way, I feel here, or at least not deep. As this falls away, there's there's a um, new eyes this person puts on when it comes to how they engage and how they see love and how they can express themselves romantically and in love. You know, it's like it's like being in love really, 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 really for the first time and being reborn like this. And so, for whatever reason, I feel they were they had a, a block in uh, experience expressing that side like there was only one side of expression that they were accustomed to doing and so the block was i feel really um i don't know like i'm seeing a block in the in the top chakras okay so so, so the the psychic ability was blocked in someone here and i don't know if it was again you or your person but i also feel like there was um heavily charged because with the passion and the flame i'm seeing heavily charged like sacral energy and then because of the blocks it couldn't express itself to reach the heart um, heart chakra, which would allow this person to experience unconditional love, showing unconditional love. And so I feel like both, for sure your person, okay, but if not both are learning about surrendering, surrendering old ways of being, surrendering how to engage in, in the world in the same way, maybe that we're accustomed to. So it's all about the past experiences and and um really shedding those um those old experiences and patterns in order to free oneself like really surrender to what this connection is like truly and like not playing games not limited not by mind not by anything except for true unconditional compassion and love and kindness here I feel like there was a, a challenge in this person as well. Um, why this was sort of originated or the block was they felt undeserving here. Like they had to, um, they, like they were undeserving, like with this beggar here, you know, it's like it, it wasn't going to come for them or like all their experience like didn't reflect to them that they were worthy. And so it's like they had to um, be in, in an energy that that doesn't feel very good you know when we're a beggar it's like we feel less than or like someone's going to um give to us what it is that's going to make us feel like we're of value and so if all they ever received was some type of energy and it never really made them feel feel fulfilled then they thought that they weren't worthy of it and so it was like a cycle of if i experience physical connection or superficial connection and like i said this this doesn't have to be someone who you know, is hardcore into sex so much as the connections they engaged with were so, so superficial here that it was like, because this is all I'm getting and experiencing, this is reflecting to me that this is all that I'm worthy of experiencing. And so I don't know my true capacity of what I truly um, am, you know, and I am full of unconditional love. Like, it's not something that is given to us so that therefore then we see it it's like i can now see that i am unconditional love and therefore the more i give the more i experience you know rather than i'm going to seek from these people these relationships and others here to tell me to show me what i'm worthy of here you know and so if, if that other person never really gives the full unconditional love or the full deep compassion and from the heart-based consciousness we never we never experience what we think we're supposed to sort of feel from another and so we never get to to feel we're worthy or deserving so i feel like this could certainly also be your lesson or mirrored here you know with um with this beggar it could be both of you guys sort of feeling like the only love you're kind of deserving of has been that type of love you've experienced. And so this energy soul experience is one of learning to give unconditionally like this mother energy, regardless of how annoying, angry, jealous, whatever sort of egoic 
lusty things are going on here, which is very difficult to do when we transcend past this, okay? So I feel like there's something here about potentially even this, this lesson being very lengthy for you, you know, with this camel. It could be that you've been on this journey for quite some time learning this lesson with this person, and it just seems like there's nothing sort of... Um, I don't know, like, I don't know if it's been fulfilling yet, you know, like uh, the camels wandering this dry desert, not really getting any water. So has this person been romantic? I don't know. I don't feel like even though this is like very romantic here, I think this person is learning to be able to express this and show this because they've been like this camel here, you know, like this is how what they're used to. Like, and now here's the dolphins playing in the water. Like, these are my emotions, and they're out of compassion and kindness and love. And, and this dolphin's following this other one who's jumping right into their emotion. So it's like this person might have been like a fish out of water when it comes to their emotions, you know. So we're going to ask Spirit for a clear and concise message for the greatest and highest good of Pile 1. What is it exactly that Pile 1's uh, connection here is... Um, all about what are the exact main soul lessons that are being experienced here between pile one and their person spirit please protect me and the viewer as i channel this message for the greatest and highest good of pile one thank you so much pile one for allowing me to tap into your energy the energy around you at this time i'm so blessed yeah the lovers it's like choosing love you know like actual love like not special love here i feel like um gemini energy pulling through like this person this person okay has to and and maybe it's mirrored because i see two geese it's how to show up in love like how to love how to find the person to be able to express and show love something very destined about this connection with the lovers and a geese mate for life okay this is like life partner sort of energy and so when we choose a life partner you know unless we're still in sort of um matrix mind which is why maybe marriages don't last so much but i'm not necessarily talking about marriage i'm talking about life partnership you know when we're in life partnership it's like the only reason why it would last like a lifetime would be if there's an unconditional love because it wouldn't really matter what's going on temporarily it's what runs deeper within and so this is the lesson here and i see these geese look almost the same so this could be a lesson on both sides you know and so although maybe someone might have been more player-ish it feels to me like it's two people for some of you guys two people kind of flipping how they understand connection to be, you know, like superficial connection to be like, what could this other person show me or give to me that's going to tell me whether I'm worthy or give to me the love that I, I feel I, I might deserve or I'm willing or I'm capable of, of having rather than what is it that I could offer here? What can I give here as love, you know, selfless love, in this situation because i'm feeling it to my soul you know to my depths this unconditional love okay so yeah could certainly be mirrored here and here we have the three wands in reverse so the choice to expand and so this is what i feel is the soul lesson is like i could stay you know in the in the desert or in the the past way of me being or I could make a choice to grow, expand, and get on the ship here with the three wands. And so this is the choice. This is the, the destined thing, is do I get on the ship and expand with this person? Or do I remain where I'm at sort of thing? Three, sorry, four cups in the reverse. So four cups is unrequited love, you know, looking at the things that, that aren't really emotionally satisfying being despondent so it's like uh i'm getting this person's overall energy like in love 
as a whole. It's like, it's not doing it for me. Of course it's not. If we don't tap into this, like, compassionate, unconditional, like, feelings from our soul, and we're just experienced sort of superficial, we're not going to be interested, and we never really feel fully loved. So this person, like, unrequited love, like, it's getting out of this sort of energy. Okay, yeah, the Empress, like, feeling unloved. Taurus and Libra energy, feeling unloved. And, and this stems from a need to find the love inside ourselves, not external relationships aren't going to show us this. So this is what this relationship is showing to this person. How do I love myself? How do I understand what unconditional love is, especially if I'm engaged with someone here who is bringing this out of me and I don't know where it's coming from. Okay. But I feel like this person could certainly have stemmed these blocks. Okay. The blocks I was seeing, the block here in the sacral. Okay. It couldn't go anywhere except for being trapped. And I was seeing block with expressing emotion as well. And I was also seeing a block here and getting to the higher chakras because I feel like maybe there was a parental or a mother sort of um, experience that has caused this person to feel unworthy or not really knowing about what unconditional love is. And <clears throat> this could be sex without love as well, you know, like experiencing the physical again, but not the, not the love part of it so i'm person lovers wow yeah five pentacles so it's like coming out of what they've experienced in love like this person's had shit ass experience in love like five pentacles five cups like it's not doing it for me i'm feeling unloved it's not it's not deep and it's making me feel at a loss here and like rejected and this person might have felt outright rejected by these actions. So even if they were engaged, they kept feeling unfulfilled and rejected with the five pentacles. So the only way is out. You know, the universe is pulling this person out, but uh, through divine will, it's like the choice is for this person to get out. So the only way to have them see this rather than focusing on what they've experienced is like, here's pile one in your face with all this passion and this burning desire to be pulled to have this death of the past you know, to, to embrace and see what the truth is inside this person, who they're like, who they really are, you know, someone worthy of love and death, the transformation, the releasing of the, the old self, the actions of self and, and the beliefs of what's out there and who I date and who I experience is going to give to me the thing <clears throat> because that's not how it happens. Right. And so the more we try to reach out to people or engage with people, the more empty we feel, the more out of love we feel, especially if we're engaged very physically too, <clears throat> you know, but yeah, um, this is all about the spiritual transformation here. So now we have Scorpio and we have the Ace of Wands in reverse and the Son of Wands. Interesting because this always kind of gives me Ace of Wands and look how much bigger that one is. So that's funny. Look how much bigger that one is. is sexual innuendo. So, yeah, this person needed to be ignited. Needed to be ignited because I feel there was trap in the sacral. Nothing was getting them to move. Like, it was desert, I feel, here in this, in this past pattern, past engagement, how I used to fuck or how I used to engage or how I used to date or my world of what I thought relationship was like was non-sparked. And so here comes pile one to spark me up. And now here I am sparked up to take action on that passion that I feel, but it would require me to heal, heal the, the experience. I had the, the blocks and the trauma. Okay. So that's the main soul experience is to heal the thing that is unhealed. The belief I have that I'm an unlovable or that I am the love that's being given to me in this moment, you know, and, and because I only experience shallow things, therefore I'm not worthy of love. And so this person was passionately pulled to this connection, but they needed that hair trigger um, inspiration to do so. And I feel like because this wand is bigger, I feel like this person is very sexually attracted to you. Like they needed to be, um, Hold here to you sexually in order to get it to 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 trigger them on this spiritual transformation. But I am getting like like I mentioned, you know, on that scale. Like I know I started off saying this was maybe like a player or a fuck boy. I feel like why it's more players because it was sh it's sort of shallow here. It, it wasn't deep. Like, but but I don't know. Like for all of you guys, whether this person was um, 
really engaged in all that much relationship, you know, because the desert. So maybe they had a lot of physical, but not a whole lot of relationship, or maybe they never really experienced any of this. But but I am getting from I'm done playing games is like their past experience and relationship, which has led to more disappointment and more blocks and, and perpetuating a self-belief, you know, that I am a, a beggar here. But that's not true. Okay, they had to see their, their truest self through this transformation. So Son of Swords in reverse, yeah, they needed to see self and understand self a little differently here. It's the owls about the experience and gaining some insight in the truth. So this is the Knight of Swords in the reverse. So this could be um, retreating, you know, retreating, not confronting. This person might be a runner, five, six, seven of wands. Yeah, this is also like, this is also putting down our, um, our fight, retreating, putting down our fight, not fighting for the thing, you know, not, not, not defending what we believe to be right. And we sort of retreat, run, hide. And there's the ace of wands again. Yeah, so... In order for this person to confront the thing that they were needing to confront, which I really feel is the decision here to see love differently, to engage with themselves differently, to spiritually shed what doesn't work for them, they'd have to confront it. And in order to confront it, they needed the spark. And the spark was you, pile one. Okay, without the spark, there was no fight in them for this lesson, for them to learn this. It's just I'm going to continue the way I have been. And it's unfulfilling, and it makes me feel five pentacles, and it's, uh, but that's what relationship is. And so here I am, unworthy of love, and just, na na na, you know, like that. Like, like na na na, here I am in this desert, like this camel. And I feel like there, there, there was a block here as well, because camel can retain, like, the water and the hump here. Hump. <laughs> Sexual energy pulling through. But, the, but they retain this, and so I feel like there's that... The emotional block I was still feeling, you know, so so I feel like this person had um, had to express themselves with love and express their emotions in a way that's authentic. But if they never experience this, it becomes like a block in stored emotions. And I don't feel they, they had an opportunity here to express and, and really feel this way because of what they've engaged with here. And so the block in the emotions and the block in the sacral, you know, sexual energy and how do I, how do I engage with my sexual energy here? And it's blocked because as we know, our emotions or sexual energy and of course our spiritual energy is all sort of tied, right? And so this person is having to navigate through shedding all the things before they can see where their blocks are actually housed you know and when we start re releasing a lot of blocks the, the higher chakras get activated here okay and the higher chakra there's a crown chakra third eye and our throat and the throat is sort of the first of the three and so i feel like this is what this is more signifying with the throat it's like the self-expression you know and and the sacral is where there's um intimacy and our sort of um, passion to to experience sensuality and be vulnerable and that sort of thing. So that's where I'm seeing the block. So it's like expressing that, being authentic about that, speaking out about that, and yeah, speaking out about that. You know, but but we can't really. It's all intertwined. Like we need to release the blocks in the sacral and the lower and then so we could deal with our emotions and be able to express authentically. And so this is what this person is being encouraged with. And at the same time, I was getting the other person or both of you guys opening up the third eye and being a seer or a divination or some sort of psychic ability here. But either which way, it leads to the path of enlightenment because it's freedom. And so there's this inner child here that's experienced something of blocks and it doesn't have to be <clears throat> them as a child in this lifetime but the inner child within them had this block and it could be in this lifetime but i feel like with maybe the, like i said a mother wound or something so in order for the inner child to be free you know and to see 
clearly hear that the inner child deserves love, deserves happiness, deserves joy. And they have to see clearly. And this is freedom and enlightenment. You know, this is giving this person freedom. You know, if I can love freely, if I know my self-worth, if I can express how I feel, if I'm no longer um, too fearful to be intimate, to express it, to recognize it when it's in front of me, to know the difference, now I'm truly free, you know, but do they have to sort of choose to, to go, go down this path. So we have three cups. Yeah, this is the superficial type relationships, and this could be networking, partying, right? So maybe this person, like I said, could be like a, like a you know, um, engaged with a lot of people or a lot of relationship, but it's very superficial. Okay, and look, nine wands in reverse. So that's this sort of seven wands in reverse energy, retreating. I think this person had no fight in them, had no real uh, flame or passion in them to experience a relationship like this. You know, and, and, and had they not met you, I feel like this person probably would have answered in a way that, that there was no need to experience this. Like, why, why would I need to experience this? You know, why do I need to experience this? And, and no one needs to do anything, but that's a major block because we are to be ascended beings here and enlightened beings. And this comes from heart space. This comes from compassion, showing love. Mother energy gives birth. You know, if we all sort of get blocked out and stalled out here, and this is sort of a dystopian sort of future here. No one ascends. And so this is providing clarity, truth, you know, and even this revelation, it's like, ah, I can see, you know, I can see. That's this giving me revelation. Like, see the truth here. Yeah. So this is what I have, you guys. I'm mostly, like I said, picking up one energy but it could be mirrored you know um where one person is having to choose as well like that their self-worth is is not dictated you know by um what someone can sort of uh, show them when it comes to a romantic relationship because this is all about self-love and and learning about unconditional love and not just physical but but deep love and giving mother-like love outwards because the only time we can experience something inwards is when we're giving it outwards. Otherwise, there's a mismatch, you know, and we're constantly turning and, and chasing something and telling the universe it, it's out there. I lack it. I lack it. I lack it. I seek it. I seek it. And so when we tell the universe it's here and it's now and it's abundant and there's no lack mindset, there's no scarcity mindset, it is here. I feel it within me then we start to output this and this comes straight back to us okay but we have to come here by the transformation and the shedding of the old ways of um, engaging with this sort of understanding and, and i feel there is a very destined path here between the two of you guys to learn about this and this person having the fight in them again the passion in them again to see this about love you know that love isn't disappointing and rejecting love is beautiful and compassionate and 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 supportive and nurturing and kind and and romantic and could be very dreamy and and like a miracle okay it could be like a miracle here surrender to miracles it is like a miracle and and reproduction here with the mother so i feel like we can be in this energy for us to reproduce more of this beautiful energy in the world not shut it out or starve it out, snuff it out in some way here, you know. So and this is what I have, pile one, and I will see you at the next one. Bye-bye. Hello, hello, beautiful pile number two. You guys picked the Healing Light Tarot. And we're looking at the person on your mind, this connection between you and this person. And what is this main soul experience that you and this person are going through in order for there to be... Um, lessons learned or just an experience fulfilled now i do suggest you go listen to the intro message okay for sure if you're here listening to this or else this is might be coming from a different place and not to really connect in the way that it's intended to okay but for sure use your own intuition to see whether this is resonating for you now i'm hoping that we can see um you know the connection so we could see what both sort of sides are needing to experience here 
but it might pull through as one sort of predominant energy, which could be you or your person, or it could be two. Use your own discretion who it, who it is, okay? And sometimes, you know, the, the lesson could be solely focused on just the, the one person having to, to go through the something, you know, although obviously energy um, is generally one's experiencing in one way, but the lesson, and it could be because in past lives, we don't know what's happened. I mean, a lot of us could have been serial killers in past lives. Anything could have happened, okay? Energy just balances out. There's karmic ties and lessons learned. And so we're also looking at whether this has been fulfilled. Has this lesson been learned? Now, it could be that you experience or they've experienced this sort of karmic experience, okay, but but haven't learned. And so, therefore, it hasn't been closed out. This doesn't mean that there's more you know, more as in um, new experiences just means maybe more of the same. So they could create new karma by not recognizing, graduating, uh, implementing, okay, you or your person. And so that I use loosely, whether it's completed, concluded, whether this connection is over, you know, but, but what we're really looking at is if this sounds like predominantly what you've already experienced or what this person has learned, and there's more, and then you'll know that there's more with this person that needs to unfold, okay? So, with all that out of the way, let's take a look and see what we see. Commitment, 13, or the number four. So, yes, four is all about stability and structuring, building, planning for stability. It's also emperor energy, so divine masculine. You know, divine masculine does what's right, that's father energy, says the frequency of commitment supports our ability to devote ourselves in all aspects of our being with unwavering belief. 13 is also about transformation because it's the death card in the tarot. So Scorpio energy pulling through. And we have silent treatment. Hmm. Silent treatment. Okay. We have attraction with number nine. The energy of attraction amplifies the qualities that attract and support us on our journey towards inner balance and harmony. So inner balance and harmony. Nine is the hermit, which is all about inner inner reflection. Okay, Virgo energy. The hermit. And we have engagement ring. We talk about commitment. Engagement, partnership, commitment, eternity, completion, and union. Okay, so this could be um, a contractual agreement. Okay, but, but I feel here, yeah, with commitment, it's like a committed sort of... Um, agreements here. Oh, interesting. Okay. Uranus and Neptune with the number 60. So Uranus is um, sudden events. It's it's very much uh, the unexpected sort of energy here. And Neptune is very dreamy type energy, fantasy-like, dream state-like. I'm going to read the book here, although Uranus, I'm getting Aquarius, and with the Neptune, I'm getting Pisces. So let's see what, um, you know, Aquarius meeting Pisces, like this is very different type of, um, different type of connecting with our, our uh, emotions when it comes to romance. Um, so I just got to find my book here. Okay. With the Uranus Neptune. Let's see. 60. Very quick here, but I like how this book sort of puts it beautifully. So we have in the primitive energy, it says you are lost in your own grandiose bubble of unreality and self-importance. Adaptive, you serve the collective with your unique spiritual and extraordinary perspective. Beautiful. Evolving, you wave, uh, you weave a tapestry of meaning and inspiration wherever you go. People are blown away by your intuition and kindness. Wow. Okay, you're lost in your own grandiose bubble of unreality and self-importance. So that's sort of where we're at here, people. Okay, let's see. Spider, this is the building of the foundation we were getting with the number four, the creative energy. Creative energy pulling through here too. The spider, I'm getting more Scorpio energy. Okay, surrender to the beauty of the natural world. Take a relaxing break and spend time in nature. Replenish yourself by feeling the beauty and ecstasy there. Okay. And we have It Gets Better. 
and we have a, a, a stitched apart here six hands in the air and we have victim so we have the green ray which is heart chakra victim and the squirrel with the acorns and the dragon green dragon isn't that interesting I was just talking about green dragons with my friend the other day huh okay we see the oak leaves and, and the acorn something taking quite some time here victim okay and we have heal abandonment time to forgive the silent treatment here seven seven and honor your agreement mission in motion eight eight wow, mission in motion honor your agreement commitment honor your agreement we were getting like a contractual agreement here solar calm with clarify number 16 or the number seven so 16 is tower energy tower is giving me this uranus energy clarify with solar calm interesting because i'm getting balancing here because the solar is very intense and calm is sort of the opposite of this so it's like the, the the intensity being sort of calmed interesting okay seven is um faith wisdom reflection and understanding is also chariot which is about the balance and the integration of shadow and and it is also tower like i said so it's tower energy that's pulling through here Okay, divine love. When you offer everything to the divine with detachment, you begin a love affair with spirit. And look at this. The wings here look like a, a hawk, which is ascending, ascension, divine love, and all these butterflies giving me transformation, Scorpio energy. Transformation. Okay, divine love. When you offer everything to the divine with detachment, you begin a love affair with spirit. Humility. You have developed the loving awareness that you and everyone else are the same but on different paths. Wow. Okay, and here is the father. We are getting emperor energy from the number four. That's father energy, the divine masculine pulling through again. So we have Aries energy. Pulling through and we have the black and the white which is giving me that chariot with the balance the integrating shadow the the yin the yang masculine feminine although this this is the father which is the masculine energy and two is about balance okay it's also about duality choices it is um high priestess energy okay which is pisces uh, all about intuition which is connecting to divine and it's also about justice and judgment and it feels to me like what we read here was some, a little bit of judgment pulling through, you know, um, but, but, but mostly how we're, we're judging, I should say, like with the justice. Divine justice, I just heard. Okay, wow. Well, the river, 34 or 7. 7 pulls through again here, like I said, with the chariot and the tower. But this is the river of our emotions and... How we deal with the shadow, the blocks and the emotions here with the shadow self. Being able to navigate to lots of shadow pulling through with this person here. Time to forgive victim. Resin. Yeah, something in the past that needs to be sort of uh, broken free, broken loose here. 38 number 11 11 is a master number divine inspiration and the synchronicities encouragements to keep going resin something in in its in its state that sort of um kept are they trying to keep something um in that state in pure state Mm. I'm kind of seeing like a fly or a bug getting stuck in this web as well. Like something 
getting preserved, trapped. That's not good. Okay, let's see. Iron number 22. 22 is a master number. It's about diplomacy, healthy energetic boundaries, divinely guided relationships, and the peacemaker, which we were getting with the justice. Iron, a very, very, very um, solid uh, metal used to um, hold up bridges and buildings. Very secure here. Foundation is pulling through. Commitments pulling through with the, the solidness of the iron. Unwavering. Unwavering, okay. And we have here hermits. I and mean, we're getting with the nine here. Seek solitude to focus intently on inner life. Serves personal creativity. Shadow attributes. Withdraws from society out of fear or negative judgments of others. Refusing to help those in need. Feeling more of the shadow in this pile. Bully. Night attributes highlights your tendency to intimidate others. Helps you confront the inner fears that bully you. And shadow attribute conceals deep fears behind verbal or physical abuse. I'm feeling the shadow attribute, although, again, you'll have to pick it with your own sort of sliding scale of where you fit. And every time I pull this card, I always, always say if somebody is abusing you, Mentally, physically, emotionally. It's never an excuse. Okay, an excuse for anything at all. And this isn't the type of reading I do here. I don't endorse it. I am totally talking about a spiritual, soulful connection here in which there sometimes hurt people hurting people out of their shadow. Okay, that's what this is. So, scribe. Light attributes, preserving knowledge and information. Shadow attributes, altering facts or plagiarizing others' work. Preserving knowledge and information. Altering facts and plagiarizing others' work. Okay. Give me a minute here to sit with this energy. I, I will begin the channeling here shortly. Okay. Pile two, I predominantly see one person's energy. There might be parts of this that might be mirrored. You'll have to determine what's being mirrored to you. Okay. Or if this is your predominant energy, then your person could be in another pile, but there might be mirroring here. And there's certain parts here that uh, could be for sure, just both of you guys that are, are not really clear to me who who's it belongs to, but, uh, but I do see a predominant energy, which I'll read as your person. Okay. And what this uh, spiritual exercise of experimentation is all about here, okay? Or I guess experience with you in this planet, in this world, at this time, okay? I don't know why that came out this weird, but that's how it came out. So, first I want to say bless your soul because, uh, I mean, bless all our souls, but, but I feel like it's difficult with this person. It is difficult here with this person because I feel like this person is really self-absorbed you know, and so I feel like this person, and not only do they not really see you, they might take you for granted. I feel like they don't see themselves um, from, from, from the eyes of, of someone that's healed, but they are very self-focused, you know, and so what they experienced in whichever lifetime has hurt them so much so that they're holding this pain of what they experienced and now seeing the whole world as out to sort of be the same or out to get them or it's this 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 place of pain and and um this place that is not very good you know like people are um out there to hurt this person you know and and so i feel this person is very um they're defensive in ways here but this doesn't mean that this person argues could be that this person just pulls away or shuts down. And this person is hard to open up. You know, and I feel like this person um, might see things that are hurtful, or they could, you know, or they lack empathy here. 
And I feel like they're keeping alive this pain. And so there's a reason why they're, they're sort of um, not letting that go because they have to transcend it and heal that part of them. You know, like, like it's time for them to forgive this experience. This is really in the shadow and it's creating this shadow self, this part of themselves that is unempathetic, that's shut down, that might be rude, that might be cold, that might be self-absorbed, self-focused. So I feel like they, they, they might treat you ungratefully or just like in their action, you know? And so it's like, I'm, I'm sort of better than the world here, although deep inside there's a pain. And so this person needs to forgive what's happened to them so that they know that um, everyone carries a shadow and they're not any different than this person. And people also get hurt. But it's so strong here, this pain that this person's experienced. And so they are in victim mentality. And I feel they've been in this for quite some time. And this manifests uh, in a way of them, like I said, like, like, uh, like all of a sudden, if this person is sort of triggered and if they feel threatened by any sort of action out there, you, anyone that makes them feel this way, they, they just sort of shut it down. And, and I don't know, like, um, there's this. I'm better energy, like I am, I, I'm better than what's happening here. And so, although what they're doing here is, is the opposite because it's like, I don't know, like this person could be having a really strong sort of narcissistic, um, narcissistic energy where it's like they're, they're what's the words it's like um triggered in the opposite way here of now being very extreme with what they're deserving of you know like people deserve to treat or i deserve to be treated in these cert certain ways and if i'm not then it's like i can identify the same thing that i've experienced in the past so i shut it down but it's like, yeah, you do deserve to be respected and you do deserve to be loved, but you also do deserve to show compassion and things aren't going to be aligned super perfectly. But I feel like because the pain is strong, it's like anytime something here triggers this person, it's like, I'm not, I don't deserve this. I deserve like all this wonderful stuff. Like, okay, we all deserve this wonderful stuff. But underneath all that, they don't feel deserving of all that stuff. So they're frustrated because it's like clearly... If I'm deserving of it, why don't I have this? So now they're bitter or angry about this. You know, so they really have to connect to the divine being within themselves. Forgive what's happened. Let go of the, the experience that triggered them in this sort of solid state. In order for them to see the beautiful light in others. Have humility. See that they are just like you. Just like everyone else. And this person has to commit themselves I feel here okay they have to commit themselves to this type of healing and not to shut it down and and run away or just block it out and move on to the next one or do the next thing you know oh this doesn't this doesn't make me happy i'm just gonna go party i'm just gonna go smoke i'm just gonna go you know whatever do this thing you know i'm gonna ignore this problem with distraction or with the thing that 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 makes me not have to deal with this so now it's a you problem. I don't have to change. This made me uncomfortable. So now I just go and I deal with this other thing. But yet I'm not healing the problem. You know, I'm not mending the problem here. I'm still staying in victim. Saying what happened to me was not right. And so now anytime I experience anything that makes me feel this way, I just go and turn away and, and whatever. Retreat, I feel. But the retreating is doing something that's unhealthy or like not to resolving or like a pattern here that's more removed than it is engaged in undoing and unpacking the trauma. You know, like asking for help in this regard. So it's like, I don't even want to see it. I don't even want to acknowledge it. I just want to know that I'm right, that I experience whatever I did experience. You know, they might not say this, but they experience what they did. 
and it wasn't right and so therefore everything is wrong because of this and i'm gonna and i'm gonna hang on to that experience because it was true that it happened you know and so therefore this is protecting me from further engaging in, in experiencing things that might happen the same way because i need to protect myself so that this doesn't happen again so this person, uh, they need to experience to, to, to deal with their emotions in a different way. You know, to find balance, to integrate the shadow, to let go and heal this thing that happened to them. And it it's, it's, could be certainly this abandonment. Okay, now this is where I feel maybe two energies. I feel like you might also be healing your abandonment issues through this connection. And finding humility, seeing a part of this person, and seeing yourself, how to be patient, how to be loving... How to extend compassion to this person who's suffering and hurt. How to be there. How to stay committed to this person. Rather than saying, oh, fuck this person. And they want to be in this energy, then I don't need this. I don't need this. So I feel like there might be attachments here on both sides. And preserving something here. Okay, like, like maybe we're trying to keep the connection the same sort of way from growing, from moving, because that would require us doing something painful here. Okay, and the pain is um, unpacking in order to stitch the heart. We have to crack it open and, and see what's all there. And this is what the agreement is. This agreement is in motion. So both of you guys are attracted to each other. This person for sure, the more picking up this person is attracted to you. There's something here in regards to commitment and it could be wherever you sit here. So it could be that this person doesn't want to get married, okay, if that's where you're at. Or it could be this person doesn't want to commit to you as your boyfriend. Or this person is non-committal here to being solid and relied, relied upon, being reliable for you. Okay, so this is manifesting in this way because of this pain. And so this person is learning to, one, be committed to their healing and not keep doing the same covering up or the distraction or the thing that makes them avoid the work. And you're learning to commit to this person, but there's an actual commitment thing going on here in this connection. And again, wherever you're at, because maybe you've been with this person for some time and they don't want marriage, and maybe you do, but I don't know, whatever marriage means to you, but this is the soul contract agreement. So not for all of you guys, it's, it's literal engagement marriage, but for some it is, and for others it's just commitment, like being committed to each other. So I feel there is a lot of humility here, you know, but I feel this person is self-absorbed and learning humility on the rest of the world. And everyone else including you and so they have to connect connect to their divine self and then you're learning humility by seeing the truth of, of who this person is and not tying it back to self in a way here that's triggered that's hurt that says well this person is just a, a big jerk here and therefore I, I don't commit to you know knowing what this person is about or being on this this journey with this person to understand you know why their hurts or what's what's happening here you know i feel it's a humbling experience for both of you guys to be reliable here for each other in some way but but i'm not talking about um because again i'm reading for soul agreements and contracts i'm not talking about an unhealthy attachment we have when it's based in um special type of love here you know fear-based love i'm talking about like actual healing abandonment wounds when we're cracked open in the heart space to deal and integrate the shadow, to heal the abandonment. And so one might be a um, avoidant here, pull away, silent treatment, avoidant, run. And the other might feel abandoned by this, you know, wanting commitment, wanting bonding, wanting relied upon energy here, and it's not coming. And so we can't build that structure. We can trust each other here, you know, and so this, this person that I'm reading, divine masculine energy, whether he's male or female, doesn't really matter. This is masculine energy is coming into divine masculine energy of balance. Okay. Because I feel this person is sort of not doing the honorable thing here and more in some, some sort of like feminine energy of shutting down and pulling away in some way you know but but it's coming through maybe as uh, as an energy here of um 
my way or the highway here as a shutting down or just silent treatment altogether, like just shutting down, just shutting down, you know, just shutting down. And so this person's learning not to shut down, not to distract, not to run away, not to pull away and to deal and commit with this, this issue, to see it. And they've cracked it open. Mm -hmm. And so I'm also feeling um, there's an intensity here with this solar calm. Because I feel like you're coming in with this solar light. Okay, this, this, this light for this person to melt the resin in some way to 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 so it's malleable here and not so stuck and and the calm here is to do it in a way that that isn't as triggered right so like calm like like it's malleable the resin becomes malleable like it doesn't completely just um it's not like a, a complete i feel um overnight process that now like let's say you 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 burn something and it burns off this is like i'm seeing the sunlight which i'm feeling is your energy if you're resonating as the person who isn't you know the 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 the, the, the main reader here that i'm doing a reading energy you're coming as this this light okay this connection you to this person is coming as this solar light okay but but i feel like it's not so intense that it it triggers this person in a way that is so unbearable that they, they they do what they normally do so it's coming in this healing light of calm that makes their resin malleable the, tr the the block the trauma the pain malleable so that they're able to work and integrate and, and do what they need to do here but right now i feel it's fixed and it's, it's frozen and in, in sort of the same state and so this is what the problem is it's like it's so pristine in, in, the, in the exact way that it had happened that um, any sort of hair trigger in the past in this person's world couldn't even sort of pierce it or do sort of any sort of healing work on this thing. It's preserved and it's its natural state. Like how do you, you know, how do you get near here and, 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 and deal with this thing? you're coming through with this light of of slowly this thing is now in a different sort of form you know if it's a round sort of solid circle it starts to become sort of melted in a way that we can work with this thing but but i think because the defenses are so high it's like who would they let to work on this thing they don't even allow themselves to work on this thing now they might not even know that they have this thing they might just chalk it up as there's nothing wrong with me you know there's nothing wrong with me it's you I don't have a problem here, but if you, if you trigger this, I'm just going to shut you out. And that, that to me is, um, reasonable, but is it, you know, that sort of thing. So this person is being called to, to repair this, this wound, you know, they, they really got to forgive what's happened to them. I, I don't feel like this person is taking any sort of accountability, responsibility. So as they learn to forgive and see what's happened to them either in this life past life whatever this trauma is this person's ascending they're getting closer to spirit with this humility they're understanding the divine being in everyone and everything in this world is absolutely beautiful and divine we don't see it as out there is triggering and and um painful and the problem you know it's like I am out there, like the beauty of the world is out there and I'm out there and they're within me, like as, as above, so below, as within, so without, like this type of a connection to the divine, you know? So I feel like this person has a really hard time dealing with their emotions without getting triggered. Massive shadow in the emotional body here, massive need for balance. And I feel like this person acts in two ways, actually. I feel like this person either gets triggered and says mean things without empathy, and they're very hurtful, and they're not showing compassion, or they completely just pull away and shut you out, which is another form of sort of um, abuse in some way, right? By shutting someone out. But I don't feel this person is trying to abuse you. 
You know, I, I feel like you and this person, because again, the soul agreement here, I feel there's you coming in as this 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 solar light to, to, to allow them to clarify this sort of thing. But I feel like only you can sort of engage here with this person because this is the soul contract. And so I feel like this person's being called to honor this agreement in doing this and they might be resisting, you know, they might be resisting this. But I feel like this is what is in motion, is this person having to go through this. And you definitely, you know, tapping into divine love. And like I said, there could be a, a, a mirroring here. You ascending, you connecting with the divine and releasing attachments. Specifically, if you have abandonment wounds here, okay, we're detaching from this. We're... we're connecting closer to the divine, we're ascending. You might be connected more to the natural world here. And you're also learning about how to commit yourself to being more humble and showing some humility and yeah, you know, but, but it sounds like it's the short end of the deal for you here in this world. But again, we don't know what's happened in past world in past life. We don't know, you know, so let's see spirit. What does pile number two need to know about this? soul experience this contractual sort of karmic thing going on here this lessons learned what's pile two needing to know about them and their person this connection anything else pile two needs to know please protect me and the viewer as i channel this message for the greatest and highest good of pile number two i'll keep that like that thank you so much pile two for allowing me to tap into your energy the energy around you at this time i'm so blessed to be here i love you guys so so much and I do realize you guys can go anywhere for your tarot readings, so I do appreciate you guys coming here. I'm feeling these here. Okay, so we have Leo, and it's strength in reverse. So you guys know what I always say with this card. Ego, right? And look, ego death. And so someone might be in their pride, you know, but, but really this is coming from a lack of confidence to face the fear. The fear would be to crack open this heart to look at the pain. So I'd rather play victim here than, than face the fear. And so this is also someone very held back, you know, and I feel like they're, they're held back in this way. It's like I'm defensive. So I could get triggered in the two ways that I mentioned, which is me, you know, like, like holding myself back from facing the fear and dealing with what I need to deal with here. Ten wands and the ace of cups in reverse. So don't read bottom of the deck reverse. So there is a heaviness here, you know, but the 10 wands is where we're, we're suffering in a way here where we can't no more. We reach a point where we just are unable to carry the burden any longer. And I feel like this pain has been very heavy with this person. And I feel in this connection has been kind of burdensome here because of the way this person deals with things. And so we see this ace cups. Okay. So it's in reverse and I'm getting... One, if we're carrying this much pain, we need to learn a love of self. Okay, this is learning to forgive so that we could be open in the heart space and, and experience emotions, have a new emotional beginning for self. It's blocked. And so for a lot of you guys, I feel like you haven't been able to have even a, a beginning in the heart space here, like, like experience this person in a new emotional beginning way. You can't experience this person until they sort of get out of this state, you know? Whatever you're experiencing with this person is a heaviness. Not not coming from, from this love place, but it's because this person is having to do this. So even though they might seem like they're giving themselves love, you know, it, it's really stemmed from a lack of them truly, truly loving self because then there wouldn't be this whole thing that I just finished talking about. Six swords in reverse, yeah, so stuck, stuck in the in that in that five swords energy. You know, this is where we could move on slowly. Once we heal, we move on to calmer waters, get through the difficulty, but it's like we're in sabotage mode, nobody wins. And we're just five swords. Nobody around us wins when we're in this energy. And I feel like this person feels like um well, I don't know how they feel, but I feel like the defense mechanism is what's keeping them in the five swords because they're not really resolving anything. They're just pulling away anytime the going sort of gets tough here, you know, or covering it up with what they're using to distract. And so there's no resolve. There's just maintaining in a five swords anytime you hit a five sword with this person. 
it's like a reset. Like we don't progress from here. We just keep in this five sword energy. Yeah, we're in, we're stuck in this five sword energy. I think you might need to know how do we engage like to, I mean, that's obviously your lesson is how to be, show humility and how to dance with this person in a way here, because you have your soul lesson, which I don't feel I see a whole lot here other than to be committed in some way to this person, you know, but, but I'm not saying martyr yourself, but I feel there's something about committing self that's reliable, that you're to be relied upon for this person. Maybe they feel they can't rely on anyone, you know? I don't know, but that's not, I don't know, I could say that's not really your problem, but maybe it is your problem. You know, maybe it is your problem in some sort of karmic way here. I don't know. I can't, I'm not the universe. I can't say what's right and what's wrong. All I know is what I'm seeing here, okay? And so I feel like something's really stuck here, keeping you guys in five swords. And we might have to, after this, just see what your sort of side is here. So nine cups in reverse, and you guys know what I what I always say with this. You know, this is someone sort of looking for immediate gratification. Me, me, me. You know, and it could be partying, drinking, distracting. Who cares about you so much? Because I care about my emotional well-being. Again, narcissistic energy pulling through. You know, and so you might feel very abandoned by this person because it's really like self self. Focused energy, I feel here, you know, but but really at the end of the day, emotionally, they're not getting the thing because really there's a lot of pain here that needs to be excavated, you know, or else we can never fully reach an emotional happiness state. We never reach the full love and nine cups plus the one. I feel like there's a 10 cups situation here. This person is meant to engage with the commitment here in this connection. But they're so focused on a reverse nine cups that they'll never get to a ten cups until they break out of this five swords. And the tower. We are feeling tower when I did the card layout. You know, we are feeling tower here. So tower, tower, tower. Falling away of the, the, the world that we've built, that we understood it to be. And so I feel like this takes a lot of humility for this person to see it takes a lot of ego work shadow work and facing fear in order to really look at the, the way we've built our life and the structure around the, the everything that holds up that i that idea that story that identity that that world you know i was victimed um this and that happened this is how the world is these are how people are this is how i am this is very much a lot of attached ideas and so this needs to fall, you know, this needs to fall. And when this falls, how does your person engage? Because I'm seeing when the tower falls, we could either cower it out, you know, or we could sort of deal with what's here. And so I think there's, there's a tower falling, which is this person's world around them. And, and I still feel like this person might still be um, in an energy that's not facing what they sort of need to. And this could be very frustrating because this is the habitual thing is like, you know, it's kind of like when, when the rubber meets the road, this person might just be triggered to do the same sort of thing, like hide away, pull away. I don't know. Difficult energy here. So eight swords in reverse. So mental limitation, the mental prison that we create, the story we tell self. Okay, so now I'm getting your experience. You're coming into this person's world. Is this tower of unexpected that's, that's causing the unexpected lightning on their world that creates the tower? So all my existence in this, in this 3D world here, this lifetime, okay, this person, they've believed their story. I'm the victim. This happened. This is how I live my, my world and, and this. And so now here comes pile two, cracking the, their solar lights or this lightning, you know, by your presence. And it's like you remove this person's limitation 
And so now they, they have no choice but to see the truth that how they're dealing with this thing had nothing to really do with the past action or experience, but everything to do with how they're engaged in their life right now. So when we take the excuse, when we take the, the thing that happened away, this person's left to explain why are they engaged the way they are today. I feel this is what you do. It's like you don't have a limitation. They no longer see the limitation there. So it's like they can't blame it on they can't blame it on the thing they've always blamed it on. And so there is no excuse or reason to be limited or to keep doing the same thing. And this is shocking because there's nowhere left to go. And so this person sort of needs to confront and deal. But I feel like I don't know that they have been doing this. And look at this eight swords. This person's like being exercised, like 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 uh, ascension, but like rising up here from this. This is interesting energy. Let's see. Let's keep going. So the world, you have to conclude this cycle. Put an end to this cycle. This is what they're being asked to do here is to conclude this to deal with whatever happened to them, that's frozen state that isn't enough of a reason or a story to be built upon. It has to fall apart and be unpacked to free them, to set them free from this limiting thought that I'm not, I don't know, that, that I don't know how to engage with other people here without seeing them sort of as, as the, the, the cause of my suffering. Hermit in reverse. Yeah, so... It's like we can't keep, we can't keep in the dark, pulled away in solitude. For some of you guys, this person distracts, you know, with, with um, substances. Okay, immediate gratification. It's like I'm going to just cover up the pain right away, like how I can right here in the moment rather than dealing with the thing. And it could be, you know, in, in many different ways. But, but I feel like for a lot of you guys, this person just pulls away, like is very removed and solitary here you don't want to deal with people at all and so they need to learn how to um heal this about themselves and to just shut down and pull away and be unapproachable or removed and the way they do this is through the introspection like getting to know self and their shadow by seeing their limitation and ascending and, and rising above the, the things that keep them sort of stuck and held back releasing the, the egos Oh boy, five pentacles in reverse, coming out of five pentacles. Yes, seven swords, seeing the truth. So I think the solar light is is shining the light. And it's, like I said, now removing the obstacle. Okay, now I'm not saying you're removing their 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 trauma or their block. Your, your light is shining on them that there is no, nothing there that's, that's, that's limiting them aside from their own self. And either they can hang on to that belief but but I feel like this person knows it's not true. Like they, they know that it's all up to them. And so this is coming clean about what they can actually see now. It's like, I can't lie. You know, I can't pretend. I feel like this person can no longer pretend because pretending was making them feel better. Like they know intuitively, like there's divine beings, you know? And so it's it's it, it feels better to say, well, everyone is sort of, fucked up you know and everyone is kind of evil and everyone kind of hurts everyone and so i'm just going to hide away but we know intuitively that's not true that there's love out there in divine beings and that we're just choosing to shut ourselves out because we were so hurt and so now it's like you might be this beautiful divine love coming in here you know and so it's like yeah i removed that that thought you had that lie you had that everyone is sort of out for themselves you know, and, and you're not out for yourself because your soul contract is to commit yourself to somebody like this. That is making me very tired. That has probably made you very tired. You know, and so now they see this. Or at least this is what the soul contract is. is like seeing this now. It's just remove this limitation. So now what do they do? Now do they step into their sort of power, their fear, conclude this cycle, put this behind them and commit and be a reliable person. And acknowledge and be and, and show some humility and not to deal with their issues in the way that they've historically done so because it's like this this victim mentality this five pentacles the staying in this nine of cups reverse energy me 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 
you know, Wheel of Fortune. This is the karmic lesson, the agreement. To, to get them out of this, to close this out, to get them back on track, you know, back on track. But we have to, we have to be honest and see where we were self-sabotaged, where were five swords. You know, this is self-sabotage, five swords, even though I know this is six, but, but it's in reverse. So they're staying in the five swords, the sabotage. And this is the thief returning the, the swords, you know, seeing the light now, being honest about, yeah, you know, maybe I have been sort of like this because I see the divine love in you. I see the divine love in you. So my story doesn't hold any weight that everyone just wants out to backstab or hurt or whatever, whatever this pain story is that I've suffered here and that relationships or people or this or that. And I'm like God here and everyone else is just doesn't know what they're doing or just blind or evil or whatever, whatever the thing is here. Okay. Yeah. Ace of swords. So it's like, they're the ones that aren't seeing the truth here. So I feel like this person is being called to see a greater truth you know and the sword the ace of swords is always through adversity we see a greater truth and so the adversity is the pain they've experienced through the pain now i see clearly and i see a truth and i can act on truth i can see and act on truth and i feel again i keep coming back to the solar clarity or sorry solar calm with clarity that's why you're here so this person can see See the truth of who people are themselves through you, you know, through you, because you're the one providing this light to this clarity. But I feel like it takes a while for this person to sort of get here. And this is what this contract agreement is like move towards this. So, so they can remove these blocks and they have to be the ones to come out of their own sort of sabotage and, and lies to self, you know, because right now is very victim. Everyone's done this to me, and this is why I'm doing what I'm doing. And so when you, you remove that, they have to say, no, I'm the one doing what I'm doing here. It has nothing to do with what's happened to me in the past. And now we see clear, and now through this, we could take more honest action and be more authentic with ourselves. Because I feel this person has some something to give to this world that's um, absolutely amazing. You know, they have to contribute this to the world. But they haven't yet. They have fool in reverse. So it's like it's like this person doesn't even bother, you know, engaging in this world. It's like this hermit is total opposite of this sort of fool energy because this is like going into the world here blind and trusting. Or it's like they've already pre-concluded how everyone is. So it's like I'm not going to be blind and stupid and just go out into the world. Meanwhile, this is what is they're called to do here is to go out into the world to share their beautiful energy and i know it's not beautiful right now but under this is divine love is a beautiful energy that I, I feel you see in this person you know that will allow them to be out in the open to experience the world and the world can experience them and their light so big hella block here you know i'm feeling aquarius energy here still very heavy aquarius coming through for you guys could be your person's sun moon rising sign so I do feel like we need some sort of um, look into you. Anything spirit wants to share about you. Because like I said, you know, maybe, I don't know why why it is that you're having to carry this heavy load. Because I, I feel like there is a heavy load here you're carrying. As this person keeps continuing with their, their story that they carry. And the longer they carry that story, it's like you can't undo this person's story or their pain. You can only be there for them. So let's see, Spirit, what does, oh, geez, six swords in reverse. What does Pile 2 need to know about this soul experience with their person? What do they need to know? Oh, my goodness. What does Pile 2 need to know? Clear and concise message for the greatest and highest good of Pile 2. Well, this is karmic, so I'm to see. Okay. Wow, I'm getting goosebumps, you guys. Oh my goodness, spirits hitting me with the with the powerful freaking reading. Karma. Okay, karma. Awareness awakened. This is we can see, we can see, and we take accountability, and we are able to even out karmas to do the just thing. It's like justice comes the 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 the. the point of reckoning here okay so i feel like you are awakened or you will be awakened 
Okay, but but I feel like both of you guys are needing to see clear, and this is enlightenment. This will set you free. So the whole point here is to see clearly, to reach a state of enlightenment, and to be fully awakened, and to to allow whatever needs to fall in this three D world to fall. The ego self, the story self, the pain self the structured self. And I feel like because I asked about you, this is reflective of you and this could be mirrored with your person, you know? So I don't know how long that's, this karma has been built up in your past, but it's, 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 it's a karma. Okay. And like I said, in the intro, it doesn't mean that the, you know, some people have a bad connotation when it comes to hearing karmic connection, but it's all karma. So this karma with this person is your sort of your karma. You're having to reach the point of, of, um, balancing the karma here and, and the awakening i really feel like you're being called to awaken you know to awaken to see and so i don't know if if your towers are already fallen here you know has your tower already fallen in your world but to, we have to see that yeah conclude both of you guys look at that the world conclusion of a life phase so when will this conclude? I feel like it concludes when this person unpacks their trauma for them. And that's why you're here and why you, what you're sort of concluding here is to deal with karma so you can see and be enlightened here. You know, I feel you're bringing this solar calm. And then and, and there's a lot of clarifying coming through here, like like actual truths coming to the surface here. And this is what's going to close out this successfully, this long cycle, you know. So I don't think either of you guys were expecting to experience this at all because this is a very sudden energy, you know. And it turns our world completely upside down. And so I feel like your world's most likely completely upside down here. And it's how do I, how do I see in the rubble? How do I see when everything's fallen? How do I do the just thing here, you know? Wow, major, major, major in the world was major. So yeah, it's it's the universe intervening here with you guys, you know? Um, let's see if there's anything the universe wants to communicate to you, you know? Especially with this commitment and this... Um, where this person is at here. So spirits, is there anything Pile 2 needs to know? Anything Pile 2 needs to know about this connection and this person on their mind? What do they need to know? Feels like they're carrying this Ten Wands. I feel your person's also carrying a Ten Wands, you know, even though we see it as they're sort of doing it to themselves. So carrying a Ten Wands and being stubborn or being, I don't feel it's so much stubborn, but it, it could be seen this way because if they just allow themselves to do the work here but they're hanging on you know or they're not wanting to do the work or face the fear so what is it exactly that pile two needs to know here spirit anything in regards to the connection with their person that they're needing to know wow that flipped very interesting so we have the two of wands in reverse the lovers in reverse so this is both about choice and both a block here and we have the Eight Cups in reverse, the Page of Swords in reverse, and the Star Aquarius keeps pulling through. Ten Pentacles, the Commitment coming out again, and the Chariot in reverse. Cancer, Aquarius, and Gemini. Okay. So, a choice is blocked here. And the choice is blocked until the healing sort of is done and all of that karmic stuff we talked about here. Okay, and I feel like um, this is an interesting energy because this is an inability to walk away from what doesn't emotionally satisfy us and a need to sort of understand or see where we're blocked, okay, where we're blocked from what emotionally fulfills me, what do I commit myself to here, if it doesn't emotionally fulfill me, do I stay, you know, and seeing this clearly, but, but it re is really around your long-term vision of what it is that you're wanting to attain and this is the healing part of this journey for you like the healing 
okay? Because I feel like there's something about the long-term commitment and attainment here that needs to be understood when it comes to what emotionally fulfills you. And I feel like there's a block, block, block here in progressing this. And so it could be, do you need to walk away from this person? Is it not emotionally fulfilling? You need to understand and see this for there to be the transformation, you know, and for the full healing sort of to happen and for the destined thing to happen here because this is destiny. Otherwise, things don't really progress. And then the pathway is sort of blocked here. And so we're not choosing the destined path, you know. And so the chariot in reverse too is about a need to integrate shadow to be balanced. And so we might still be integrating shadow here, you know, in order for there to be then the choice to say, what what is it here of a partner and a path that is destined for me that is going to be emotionally fulfilling because I, I must walk away from what what isn't fulfilling or at least I need to understand what this is you know because sometimes this is going to do the hermit's work and to, and then to say here's what what my wish is for myself or my desire my hope what what my vision is and so we've done that full full healing to know what we want to commit to and build because I feel like there's something you're wanting to build here with the Ten Pentacles, you know, over time. Yeah, the commitment. I think commitment's either really important to you or this connection. Yeah, Eight Swords. We have to both come out of this Eight Swords because I feel like there's mirroring. You're maybe limited in how you engage with this person. And you might feel like you're stuck or that you don't have a choice. A choice maybe to walk away or a choice for love. You know, like you're not seeing it, but there's a need to break out of this mindset so that you can be free, you know, and, and, and not to lose hope because potentially this is how the healing happens because there is a contractual thing here in regards to this commitment and this long-term building of something, you know, but I feel like it, it's something that maybe over time, you know, in some sort of distant sort of way that this could be achieved only through our understanding and our own transformation so if you're still stuck with this person you know maybe you're kind of delaying this um this change this transformation in this person by delaying your own transformation your own walking towards what emotionally fulfills you you know because i feel like you're committing yourself or being very much relied upon and i feel this person wants to keep this state and maybe you want to keep the state, you know, rather than allowing it to just fall like the tower. Like, let it fall. Let this person fall, you know. And it's difficult here because I feel you feel this person's divine love. And so you don't want to abandon this person, especially if this is their trigger. But I feel like you brought some clarity and some light and, and this, this, this wound is now malleable. And so this frees them from the eight swords. They have to see it differently because now they can no longer blame that eight swords in this thing. They have to deal with it differently. There's no more lies. The seven swords in reverse, like they have to be honest. And I feel like in order to deal with the honesty and the truth, they have to be sort of put in that position. I don't feel this person is put in the position to deal with it, you know? And so they're not really integrating that shadow just yet because they're not really forced to do so. And they're just still engaged in this sort of behavior. Okay, pile two, this is what I have. I love you very much, and I'll see you at the next one. Bye-bye. Hello, hello, beautiful group number three. You picked the Night Sun Tarot, and we're looking at the person on your mind and this soul experience that you have going on with this person. What are you supposed to experience with this person? The main soul sort of contract or agreement. Um, have you learned it all? You know, or is there more that you're needing to learn with this person? So the part of is there more is sort of subjective, okay? Because it could be that we keep experiencing the same thing until we understand or understand it and close out that sort of karmic experience, okay? So there could be more with this person. It could be forever more if we don't learn. But if we see here something we've experienced and there's, there's other lessons that maybe we don't see just yet, maybe there's more lessons above and beyond what we've already experienced, okay? And so we could create new karma, you know, obviously uh, we engage, so it could be a continuous thing. So it's kind of loose in regards to, you know, is there more? 
uh, with this person and the karmic lessons. But for, for the most part, we're looking at what is the main sort of experience, the lesson here, the soul lesson between you and this person. I do suggest you go back to the intro, listen to that if you haven't done so, so that you know where this reading is coming from or else it won't make a whole lot of sense, okay? So you can use words such as karma, balancing energy, soul contract, whatever it is here, there's a soul understanding okay that, that has been built over time it could be many many lifetimes whatever the reasoning being so i do ask you to use your intuition what you'll see feel or hear to determine whether the pile makes sense to you i've not looked at these so let's take a look what is it exactly that is going to pull through now if this sounds like your energy what you've learned and your experience your person could be in another pile there might be two energies here to determine who is who Okay, I'll, I'll read this as your person if it comes through as one. Okay. I am filled with regret. Oh, wow. Okay. Transparency 43, or the number seven. The energy of transparency supports our expansion towards a higher vibrational state of being with more insight, honesty, and clarity. Okay, I'm feeling seven swords energy. Camera, reminiscing, keepsake, perception, learn from the past, make memories. And coffee cup, meeting and conversing, savoring the moment, feeling uplifted and friendship. Getting six cups from this. Mercury and Saturn, number 24, or the number six. So Mercury is a ruling planet for um, Gemini and Virgo. And... Saturn's the ruling planet for Capricorn and Aquarius here. Okay, so Mercury and Saturn. Interesting. Okay, um, I'm going to read this from this book as well because um, it's very brief and it provides a lot of insight here to the energy. 24. So in the primitive states, it says cruel, rigid thinking and speaking lead you to separation, righteousness, and arrogance. Adaptive, commanding, authoritative, and temperate speech and thinking create possibilities for others to learn and grow. Evolving, you exemplify inspired leadership in your writing, thinking, and speaking. Others are wowed by your capacity for laser-like, impeccable communication. Okay. All right. Let's keep going. So we have the lizard, stream states, And we have surrender frustration. Frustration doesn't open any doors. The key to resolving a dilemma or dissolving a block is to take a breath, center yourself, and regroup so you may approach the situation more calmly. Yeah, okay. And then surrender to the magic of who you are. We all have magic in us, even in the mundane aspects of life. Remember that you are a magical being with a uniqueness and worth that come from just being you. We have structure, and we have perseverance, orange ray, which is sacral, intimacy, sensuality, creative energy here, perseverance. Okay, trust, 4-4, four, four. ask, listen, allow. And master alchemist, 5-5, five, five. violet flame activation, wow. Oh, wow. Okay. And then we have retrograde review. 15. 15 is double energy. And um, retrograde review could be um, hermit energy. Past experiences here. Limitless. See yourself open to receive in the most miraculous way. The divine can use anything and anyone. Mm. And we have sacrifice. Sometimes surrender is painful. God's cutting away all that needs to go. Illusions, obsessions, addictions. It's a sacrifice to love. Let me see if this is in frame. Okay, perfect. Gratitude. You fully appreciate the invaluable lessons that life lovingly presents to you. Okay, crone. Number 13, 13 is the death card in the tarot, transformation, Scorpio energy. Uh, 
Chrome is all about the experience. Okay, and then we have the seed number 66, 66 a master number, service as a source of joy. Okay, this is where one gives from an overflowing cup, not to martyrdom. The seed, alrighty, autumn, number 19. And we have the oil of vitriol, number 35. Okay, and we have the Midas or Miser, light attributes, entrepreneurial or creative ability to turn anything to gold, delight in sharing life's riches. And shadow attributes, hoarding money and emotions, obsessive fear of losing your wealth. Saboteur, light attributes, highlights your fear of self-empowerment and the change it would bring in your life. Shadow attribute induces self-destructive behavior or the desire to undermine others. Okay, and then we have the child nature. Light attributes, friendship with animals, communication with nature spirits or shadow attribute, tendency, tendency, geez, Linda, tendency to abuse animals, people, and the environment. Okay. And then we have the Don Juan light attributes, spotlights your positive and seductive qualities, shadow attribute using power, romantic attraction for private agendas. Okay. I kind of getting blended here, you guys, but I do feel it's mostly, well, I don't know who's it's mostly, but I feel your energy is here for sure. Okay. And, and your person is too, because I feel like what was experiencing here was certainly a lesson. Okay, so I don't know how it's going to come out here fully, okay? So you'll have to determine who is who here and, and try keeping sort of um, uh, an objective sort of point of view here, okay? So I feel like there's been an experience with your person here that's made you feel like this person used and abused you in some way here. I don't think you like what's ex what you've experienced with this person. You might not fully understand yet, you know, like, like what exactly, what exactly is the full lesson here with, with this person? Because it, it seems to me like this person um, might have just been in here to, to show you something. And I feel for a lot of you guys, it, it could be something very sexual here, okay? And so I, I feel like your energy is coming through as somebody here who is needing to take the energetic focus off of them and, and what they've experienced and why they did what they did and how you could change it or what you're supposed to do with them or, or outwardly sort of do and that towards okay, this has happened and I might not completely have forgiven them or seen why, but how can I tap into the place in myself that understands that I am valuable and that regardless of what's happened, who's come in and who's done what, what can I produce in my world? Like, what can I be grateful for? What am I able to... Um, pull out that's positive and try my hardest to surrender and detach from all of the 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 more negative charged emotions and experience that I've had with this person and the lesson here is how do I um, get through not being hung up on constantly thinking about what has happened and how that's impacted me and and getting sort of angry or, or triggered or feeling emotionally like it, it's taken my power because right now I feel like it might have taken your power or at some point you know you felt like you were just sort of the sacrificial lamb that was used here and so I feel like there's lots of drama here at some point with this person you know and it, maybe you didn't uh, get to express yourself how this person used you or made you feel or maybe there was a lot of sort of more um i feel that there's a surface sort of engagement here with reaction to how this happened it's like i'm mad 
okay but but yes but nobody no matter what they do can really make you mad really unless you allow yourself to get mad about what they've done and so this is pulled from somewhere within you and yes people could do poor things that doesn't mean that they can't behave and misbehave but how we react and how much pull to our emotion does it does it pull out of us is solely our own thing that we need to look at and so we need to understand ourselves how does this experience made me feel made me look at myself made me deal with things right now in my world you know and if i'm still charged by the situation or still have some unresolved things here let me see what they are but try to see it in a way here that isn't feeding the same thought i've always had about it and that this person's bad or what they did was was um did this that and the other and therefore i i keep coming with the same sort of thought process i really need to come as an observer of what has happened here and say that this person has certain things here that, that they were whatever that they had on their own end that they had to learn you know that had nothing to do with me at all so I feel like um, this is solely showing your energy, you know. If I got to be honest, it's like, how do I engage with people who aren't honest, people who are mean, people who don't do good things? So I feel like maybe you're passionately pulled by this person, you know, sexually. I feel, again, like I said, it, it seems like someone's sexually just sort of used you in some way here. And it's like, what is there a value that's left here, you know? And so spirit is showing, like, what's the value here is what you're going to make of it. And it, it could be something absolutely beautiful. And it could go from seed to tree because of this experience. And from this tree, there's going to be a lot of fruit. But we can't just hold the seed and not sort of plant it in the in the areas that we're needing to foster it in order to attain the thing we're supposed to get from this experience, even though we may not see it. And so this starts with um, one pulling away from the drama or the anger or the um, conception we might have here, because I think we have a preconceived sort of um, idea we've already concluded. You know, we've already concluded something here. And so the pain is, how do I detach from that experience and not attribute my own self to that, you know, my self-worth or what, what I tie to it? Because this is an incident that sort of happened. And yes, it happened sort of to you, but, but again, we are divine light beings that nothing can really happen to you, your authentic being, you know? And so... If we're abused or if we're sick, if we have cancers or viruses to the body, and the body is not to the spirit and the soul. The body is experiencing, you know, and so we need to understand that we are more than just the body of that experience and that the divine has used this person and the situation here to show you something within yourself that you will only see within yourself once you sort of shift the focus from the mindset of how you're you're still reflecting and engaged in your understanding of this person and their engagement and making a, a judgment or an understanding that you have because it's just fueling your um I just want to say, like, like, it's fueling the feeling you have here, which you might dress up not as anger, but uh, but underneath it all, it is upset at this person. It's anger. Okay? If we feel any sort of contraction here, jealousy, resentment, anger, anything that makes our heart kind of contract, that's anger. You know, are we uplifted? Are we happy? You know, and I get it. Like, you can't just turn it on to be happy when we're treated this way. But when this comes into our energetic being and we say wow like the gratitude i have for myself for seeing the true beauty of who i am because of this experience comes up and it's more predominant than the contracting and the negativity 
then we know we've done the work that we're sort of needing to, to, to do here. And so it's kind of like a fake it till you make it point, but then you'll start to see. Because right now it's stuck on some, some program. You know, the program of what you're feeling here, what you're telling yourself. And so although it's real to you what you've experienced, and it's not diminishing it at all. And this is where it's it becomes very tricky how the universe works. Because if I believe people are bad and things are lack, that's all I'll experience. And that becomes true. But the objective truth is that the world is all abundant, regardless of what you believe or not. But you could experience your whole world as being lack and scarcity and that the world is out there. And if you believe it to be true, it is true. So this is true what's happened. But we need to train the mind to say there's a whole lot of other truth here going on that you're not maybe engaged with or seeing. And this is the karmic sort of lesson or experience to see the magic of who you truly are by this experience. Because there's something within you here and it, it, it could be um, planted to this beautiful abundant tree that's going to produce over time a lot of things here for you. And it, it is connected to your gratitude, you know, starting with the gratitude. And so I think if you feel any sort of regret for what you did or you would change it you know if i could do it again i'd change it then then i feel like you're still an old mindset because until we're coming from i experienced this for a reason and now i can understand and be grateful and keep doing this sort of work with self and slowly over time we will see the light and we'll see through this illusion. I feel the illusion is the lie. And, and the lie here is you were lied to and deceived and treated in a way. But the bigger lie here is the lie to self. That this now determines my self-worth or what I've experienced is now the truth. And it's not. What you experience is not the truth. It's what you're seeing as true. You know, because that's what you're seeing and what you experience. But you're being called to see through this. Because that is the lesson of what, to, what is supposed to be planted here. And so... I feel like we're we're really needing to um connect to this sort of energy but there's a lot I don't really understand or see here yet that's that I got to be honest like I'm seeing dream state so some of you guys might resonate with some sort of dream state here and I don't know if I'm picking up with this person but but I feel like their lesson here could certainly be to learn to trust and to with, with this violet flame activation, it's like how much power are we giving away to our experiences and, and to others and, and to things that could contaminate our, our self-understanding and our self-worth, you know, like external things and actions. And trust that we're enough on our own. I think you're being called to the point where, and, and this might be really hard. I don't know that you're there, but this is coming through, so I have to say it. To the point where you can engage with this person and not be triggered at all. Sitting with them and befriending them in a, in a very okay way, but to still feel, feel uplifted about who you are and yourself, which will take time. You know? Like that, that's what the, the soul lesson here is. Because then this is truly saying that this person has no power over me and, and this experience doesn't dictate my energy at all. This is interesting. Okay, I, I, mean, I got a poll because I feel like we're not really seeing much about the other person. And again, I don't know, maybe this is your person. So spirit for pile three, please. Can we take a look at the connection here between pile three and their person? What is this soul experience on both sides here that pile three is needing to know? You know, and maybe this is spirit just wants you to see this because it's like, I think the lesson here is, does it matter what this person has learned or hasn't learned? You know, and, and that was kind of the first message that came through is like not putting the spotlight on the thing that happened in them, but more on self. And so we're getting minimal, you know, we're getting really minimal. 
but uh, I, my, my pull here was really to see what is the whole lesson? Like, what is the whole lesson here? Why did this happen? Like, what are they supposed to be learning here? Clear and concise message for the greatest and highest good of pile number three. Please protect me and the viewer as I channel this message for the greatest and highest good of pile number three. Thank you so much, pile three, for allowing me to tap into your energy or the energy around you at this time. I'm so blessed to be here. So we have transparency, and then we have the sort of truth in reverse. So yeah, lies are unclear. There's an untruth, and I think the truth we still aren't seeing about self, you know, which is an action, an experience. Someone else does not dictate my value, my self-worth. Hung up, stuck on that thing, that person, that situation that's happened. So five wands, yeah, we're, we're, we're conflict. Okay, but I see only one person here. So this conflict dies the minute we surrender. And that we know that the conflict is always is only within us. A conflict cannot exist if it's not happening within us. Sure, the other person might be conflicted or whatever, but, but the conflict ceases to exist when we choose to see it completely different. And we, we don't feel the inside sort of conflict going on because I feel like there's a lot going on on the inside here. But we're not seeing the great truth here that we're the ones that yield the power and the truth. And so I'm seeing the, the, the crown of thorns and seeing sacrifice. So Jesus is pulling through here, you know? So it's like you have to carry the sins of another in some way here, you know? But but what would Jesus do is kind of what's pulling through here. Forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. You know? It's kind of what's pulling through here, if I, if I have to be completely honest. If we don't see it that way, like feel it that way, I should say. If we don't feel it this way, then we're not learning the lesson here. Now, I don't know how they'll come in here, but but that's that's your thing, you know? And like I said, like in a lifetime... It doesn't mean both of you guys need to equal your karmas. They did this and I did that. And now in this lifetime, it could be many lifetimes ago. This, this is your soul lesson here with this person. And maybe this person's already learned their lesson. You know, I don't know. It could be they already have. Or it could be their next lifetime. They kind of pay karma on this or this lifetime. Not seeing this person and what they'll learn. I'm seeing more this. This is your lesson here. To see the great truth. And I feel like you feel like you sacrificed yourself in some way here, but it's like Jesus doesn't say, okay, now what about me? Or screw all you people. You know? So. Three sorts. You know, we need to allow ourselves to heal through the pain that's happened here, but the true healing happens in this sort of mindset. And so it's, it's difficult to get there, and we can't lie. We can't lie and say, oh, it's okay that this happened. And this is not what we're trying to do. We're not trying to cover it up either. We have to fully feel the anger, the frustration, and, and scream in the pillow and let out whatever. And then understand a greater truth, the great soul lesson. As Jesus would, you know, this is the truth. And look, one sort of truth pointing up. It's only one truth. Okay, there's their subjective truths, what they experience, what I experience, you know, is some subjective truth. But there's only one great objective truth, and the great truth is that of love and of the heart. And the heart doesn't pass judgment, and the heart is where we connect to, where we know of the great sort of magic. You know, the magic, which is, I am here to give of myself in a, the most loving way, and nobody can taint my pure being. And nobody can taint my pure being. You know, then we know where to really heal. Now this person doesn't trigger me at all. This action doesn't doesn't make me feel bad or any of this stuff. I could see a greater truth. And, and then you see your beautiful light of who you truly are. You know, but but unless we do this, we're still we still haven't healed the three swords. We're still upset. We're still making reasons, excuses, still looking at them, still conflicted, still in, in this sort of conflicting energy. A fool in reverse. And the page of pentacles in reverse. So this is a blocked new beginning in a manifestation of you moving forward. 
okay so until you can understand what i'm saying here without getting upset and leaving you know uh, comments that 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 if this doesn't resonate for you then not your reading this is soul connection of what you're learning here and so there's a manifestation blocked a new beginning blocked here until this is experienced okay not everyone has a soul experience sometimes it's just this person was fucked you know and i didn't deserve this and off they go and and whatever but in this soul experience you are to learn this okay i'm not saying every time this happens this is this, this person is the the one you know that, that you got to carry the burden and they're not to blame in every instance just this instance this instance whatever happened to you because i feel this person used you abused you lied to you was mean or did something you don't trust them so let's tap into the heart space okay if we can't rise above it and we can be honest about it but then that's that means we're still not there we still haven't learned the thing yet you know or it's not your lesson but then move on okay then move on to say this person's fucked and move on you know if you can't move on if you can't manifest you can't have a new beginning this is where you're at and difficult to hear for sure okay but i want you to see the star i want you to see so this is about their future wishes attaining our wish and our desire but it's the healing card okay it's also destiny which i feel this is the destined thing here so that we can heal the star aquarius energy and she's naked so i feel very vulnerable here i do feel a lot of you guys were, were kind of sexually feeling like you were taken advantage of you know very vulnerable here how could you trust again how could you trust again but you can't you can trust again how can you you're the one who's going to do this by by seeing a greater truth here beyond the incident and the action queen pentacles virgo taurus capricorn so this energy is is a very reliable grounded energy okay the, the queen of pentacles doesn't really need anything or anyone here to be relied upon to accom be accomplished to manifest and to be grounded and so i feel like you're being called to manifest something in regards to self you know seeing the magic of who you truly are that you can rely on yourself that you are this beautiful energy here but you need to get here and and truly feel it and understand it not to just sort of know it as a concept here okay yeah so seven wands this is having the higher ground to fight for what we believe in so i i feel like um i feel like we should be in tune okay we should be in tune here what are we fighting for and that if we feel we're going against the grain and it's heavy then it's not meant for us because what's for us doesn't weigh a thing we don't have to fight pressure coerce it comes and it flows okay so i feel like we want to know what we're fighting for if we're being defensive and we have to be in touch with the the deeper part of self that says is this supporting the deepest part of self here that's actually coming from a heart place or is this a reactionary response to what's happened to me you know because those are two different sort of things six yeah lovers in reverse gemini energy so the destined partner some of you guys could have you know been in a third party here this person could have been in a, having to choose from you and someone else okay but but i feel like there's there's a manifestation that's blocked the choice that's blocked in the destined path until the healing is done and we're seeing clearly about the sacrifice we've made and what that really means you know what does the sacrifice really mean and how we're seeing it you know does the sacrifice mean i'm so stupid and i was used or this person's mean and you know like whatever story we we think it means right now i think it is not it is far from the truth and it, it is your truth and you could see it that way for sure but it's creating your reality and it's distorted here from a greater real truth that's going to exist whether you believe it or not and the great truth is from a heart space here that everyone has shadow that everyone's a divine being despite their actions that the divine uses people places and things in ways we can't even imagine in order to elicit certain types of 
changes and, and make us see the light. Okay, so let's see some more for beautiful pile three. What do they need to know here, spirit? What is this pile three is needing to know? Final message for pile three. Any questions they might still have? What's going to help them move forward here with this thingy majigger? Okie dokie. So, yeah, we have five swords. Conflict. Okay. I see one person again. I feel you're in the conflict alone and you probably feel this way. I am actually going to pull for this person because I feel, I feel even though spirit doesn't want to show it, I'm not seeing it. So I'm going to ask, okay, to give us some sort of insight on this person's lessons, their karma, whatever, because I feel like you're alone. You're alone in this karmic lesson. You're suffering alone. You feel like you're experiencing alone. This person fucked off. They ghosted. They're not experiencing the pain, you know, and that's more frustrating because it's like, why am I alone suffering in this thing? When maybe they were the ones that did the bad thing or the lie or the, the cheat or the whatever. But you don't have to be here. You're the one choosing to be here. And it's hard to hear that, but you don't have to be here. So if you're feeling this way, it's true you feel this way. Let's look at why you still feel this way. And make you sit with this so you truly understand that you don't need to feel this way. And detach and release this understanding. It's not true. It is a truth you're creating. Okay, Empress self-love healthy energetic boundaries okay abundance this could be wounds we have in regards to how we see ourselves you know when it comes to love and and i always see cleavage with this one again this is giving me very sexual energy here with this empress lots of sex pulling through here okay so it's like how do i be loved and love self and what's my engagement with physical acts of sex and how I show up and, and give of myself and understand this sort of dynamic I have going on with myself. Because it's all about how I understand myself, how I connect to that part of me, not how others are sort of engaged in this dance with me, but me understanding my own boundaries, me understanding my own sexuality, my own love of self, my own abundance. Yeah, so there's a blocked manifestation here, and she's also about the manifestation. So I feel like you're being called to manifest something beautiful here, okay? But it's blocked. You can't have the new beginning. You can't have the seed. Okay, the seed keeps coming through. And for some of you guys, maybe it could be that this person got you pregnant. Okay, for some of you guys with the seed, and here I see the tree. Okay, and, and, and the pregnancy here. So for some of you guys... But I feel like you were impregnated with the, some sort of understanding that you're to come to terms with so that there could be a manifestation in your world. Nine swords in reverse. Yeah, we got to get out of that mindset. We're the only ones in this mindset creating the bigger anxiety that don't need to be there. Can't eat, sleep, dark night of the soul. You know, our thoughts have the best of us. They're not, not true. They're not true. Okay, five cups in reverse. Yeah, we got to get out of that. So we're still looking at what happened to us, you know, feeling regret, filled with regret, remorse, sadness. Don't like what happened to us, but we don't have to sit here. That was the past and past, like I say, is illusion because it doesn't exist no more. It's gone. The only thing keeping it alive is the story we keep alive. And we could keep this thing alive constantly by our thoughts and the, the feelings we attribute to it. But the minute we stop to detach from that thought it could come through us as a thought but we don't feed it we don't mull over it and, and stay in it we're no longer giving it life we now can have a new beginning of manifestation here okay so this is four wands this is union this is creating stability okay so i feel like there's a manifestation here that's blocked that could create the stability in the union and look at the heart because it all stemmed from that ace of, of, of swords, which was the truth in the heart space. So once we understand that lesson to do the, the full healing from the heart place, so the truth, like I said, like the actual heart space, not the ego space, not the fear, not the resentments, not any of that stuff from the true heart space. Then we come into union and then we build the foundation and then there's success marriage. Okay. This is my, um, 11, 11 card, twin flames for me, it signifies. So this could be a very sort of twin flame type connection here. Okay, yeah, self-love and, and emotional new beginning. Then we have the new beginning. So we can't manifest the emotional new beginning. We can't manifest the coming together. We can't manifest this for ourselves. 
until we recognize we're, we're self-defeating by hanging on to the experience and not recognizing the beauty and the self-worth. So you're coming into this beautiful divine empress energy, divine feminine, okay? Taurus, Libra energy. Now, I'm going to ask about your person. If spirit wants to show kindly spirit for pile three, anything about this person who has been unkind, anything about this person that we can see here that pile three needs to see, understand or know that's going to help them but their person here who's been in this karmic experience with them why what is it about this person what's going on with them what can we see here please kindly thank you so much spirits any questions that's going to help pile three sort of get out of this state temperance Sagittarius balance healing so you had the star and now we're seeing temperance all about healing being in workable energy to come together to create synergy here Empress coming out again okay so we already know what Empress is divine feminine like I just finished saying let's take a look now look the nine swords underneath so this is still you okay this is still you so we have the four swords in reverse so this is, we didn't do the reflecting with the three swords yet, which we already talked about. You have three swords in reverse. You need to do the healing. You need to sit with the pain and reflect in a true way that sits with truth. Okay, not, not the truth that we're seeing, but the, the actual truth will only set you free once you sit with the actual truth and see it. Sitting with that three swords. And then we're in workable energy. Then we've done the healing. Then we could be workable here, okay, with temperance. And page of cups in reverse. So... The block of the emotional new beginning that we were seeing will only happen when we're in workable energy, when we find a way to find balance and healing through this process of alchemy. Okay, so still not your person. So what do we have here? We have the Eight of Wands. Then we have a breakthrough. This is communication. This is forward movement. Eight Wands, okay, communication. And here we have the Eight Pentacles. So Eight Pentacles in reverse. So eights is all about movement, change, and attainment. It's also the star reduced in the tarot, which was talking about the future sort of hope and attainment. So I feel like with the eight ones, this is talking about having forward movement and a breakthrough, although this, this doesn't really look like it's, you know, a typical eight ones type energy. It's almost like it's it's going in a circular direction and this is sort of not putting the work and giving up let's see why is this here like this okay again with the three swords in reverse you know the need to sit with heart-based consciousness which is truth i think your person is mirroring you in this way you know like they're having to sit with this yeah three cups is the reconciliation through the communication here in regards to the work being done which is both on both of you guys with this three swords because we're seeing the two like i said there's their truth your truth both untruths but there's only one objective truth one heart one being four wands union one okay masculine feminine coming into balance creating the thing the one truth this hasn't been created or done the work hasn't been done to have that breakthrough it's still sitting kind of cockeyed here okay because neither of you guys have done this you have to really reflect on own self own truth in order to have the reconciliation and you might not want reconciliation with this person i'm just telling you what this contract is okay you want this person don't take them okay karmic connections could be your own divine will whatever you see i'm just seeing here three cups reconciliation coming together once the work's done okay yeah the lovers it's blocked right now the coming together, the choosing of the path, the partner, you know, this is blocked until the reconciliation here. We can't choose each other. We can't. The destined path is blocked. The work hasn't been done. So three swords in reverse, both of you guys. Okay, page of pentacles in reverse. So the manifestation is blocked. And here's the four pentacles. Yeah, so four pentacles is a need to release, let go, and allow the universe to work with us so we can manifest the better okay and when i say the better it's like we can detach from the comfort zone the thing we know thing we're used to 
okay, the safety zone or whatever, in order for there to be the true manifestation of something here that's, that's severely blocked right now. Okay, so we could be hanging on to, like, I, I feel you're in four pentacles, but you're in four pentacles in the way you're handling this, which is not really a pentacle, it's more of a, a habitual sort of way of engagement. And so your advice is really to pull the energy and focus that way towards the four swords, like really four swords that really heal, really heal this and come to this understanding of the, the ace of swords. Okay. The objective truth here with the heart consciousness of forgiven, forgiveness, if you really want to get here and, and release yourself of this. Okay. And this person, I feel they're more for pentacles in their realm. They could have another relationship. They could be hanging on to some structure here. You know, some structure right now that is captivating and holding them and it's blocking the path of reconciliation here with you. It's blocking the new manifestation because this is solely your person I'm feeling here because we asked about them. So there's mirroring, okay? But there's, I feel, is more in a practical way and the foundation and their lifestyle and you're more sort of attached to this relationship, okay? But, but I feel like there's a mirroring in the work that needs to be done Okay, that hasn't been done here. So we got to get out of this anxiety and it's, it's, it's hard, you know, if people just say, just stop thinking about it. Like you could think about it, you know, think about it, but then send it on its way. Do not feed those thoughts. Let the thought come. Don't attach yourself to it. Don't identify as the person who's had this experience and send the thought on its way and allow yourself to um, embrace the beauty that you are because this is the greater truth. We may not feel it right now. But it's still the truth, you know, like, look how beautiful she is. Surrender to the magic of who you are. We all have magic in us, even in the mundane aspects of life. Remember that you are a magical being with a uniqueness and worth that comes from just being you. Okay, and there's the white horse, purity, like your, your authentic self is untouched. You're untouched here. Nobody can touch that pure place, no matter how frustrated you are here, okay? Devil pulling through so the devil's an illusion that we keep alive shine your beautiful light on the reality of the situation okay so you can manifest something here beautiful because you're being called to manifest and, and be very grateful you know think of everything that could could be happening that isn't that is is like that you wouldn't want to engage with and think of all the beautiful things that you have okay this is beautiful even this experience is beautiful, you know, because it's it's bringing this beautiful manifestation to you. Trust in the divine. Divine loves you, okay? Trust in the divine. So this is what I have. Oh, and dreams. Like, so, so I think you're getting a lot of information through dreams here as well, okay? So pay attention to this. Pile three. So this is what I have, beautiful pile three, and I'll see you at the next one. Bye-bye.